Hello, everybody. So recently I've been getting asked a lot of questions about what laptop or what PC, what computer should I use as an architecture student? And I want to answer that for you now. So I was pretty sure that there's a lot of videos out there already explaining and covering this topic of what is the best laptop for architecture students. Except that kind of made me think like, why do I still have so many people ask me this question if there's already so many resources out there for you to figure it out? And so I had to look at some of these videos and that's because these videos are all uh, 10 to 15 minutes long and they're all promoting affiliate products which they make sales on and they make money from it and so it's not really caring so much about the architecture student, they're just trying to get sales. And so that makes me just want to make a quick video about this topic because um, I want to try and clear up this idea of what is the best um, architecture laptop and um, so yeah, let's go from there. So for me, I personally didn't use a laptop in my first, well, all throughout high school and my first two years of architecture school. Some people thought I was crazy. 90% of architecture students have a laptop. Um, but the reason for that is because I've got this bad boy behind me, which is a, a PC desktop. PC desktops are obviously a lot um, more reliable and more efficient because they are bigger so they can have better um, features and uh, hardware. Except the only downside is that you can't bring it to uni. However, because I'm living um, in the city, just you know, a two minute walk from my uni campus, it's not a big deal for me. I do a lot of work from home. Um, however, I understand that not everyone can bring um, their PC to uni and so they might want a laptop. However, when I get asked this question, what I usually recommend is that having a PC is a lot better for working on architecture programs and software such as um, doing renderings and 3D modeling and all that because it's a lot quicker and you're not going to have much crashing um, like you do on laptops and it's going to be um, a lot more pleasant experience working on a PC. Not to mention that they're also more ergonomic and you don't have to have a laptop where you're bending over and all this kind of stuff. It's a bigger screen and all that. However, if you do do a lot of work at um, university, I also recommend having a laptop. I recently picked up a laptop myself, just a small little, um, I think it's an Asus Spin, so it's nothing special. It's really, really slow, I won't lie, but um, it does the job because all I really need it for is to bring my work to uni to show my teacher. So if I've got um, renderings on my screen or something, it just means I don't have to print it out and it's a lot easier to show my 3D models and all that. And I'm also quite old fashioned. I do. I take all my notes in written books with my handwriting because I find that is a lot better for creativity and you can um, do sketches as you're taking notes and it's just, it just gives you a lot more freedom than writing on a Word document or something like that. Anyway, so what I recommend is that you have a PC rather than a laptop because they're a lot quicker. Anyways, let's say that you decide not to get a PC because they're either more expensive or you need something to bring to uni. And so when you're getting a laptop, you know, I'm not gonna recommend you get a certain brand or a certain model. What I wanna tell you though is that um, kind of a general rule of thumb when buying a laptop. And this also goes for buying a PC as well. So the way laptops and PCs work is that um, the better hardware you've got and the better software you've got, um, the faster it will run and the smoother it will work. And so if you've got better hardware specifically, then it's gonna run a lot quicker. I just wanna take a moment to say, if you're enjoying this and you're finding something useful in this video, please leave me a thumbs up on the video. It really helps engage with YouTube and get this video out to other architecture students that need to hear this kind of information. But after you leave a like, we can continue. I'll be waiting. No, not really, let's move on. What I tell people that ask me this question of what is the best laptop to get, what I tell them is that if you've got a high amount of memory, so that's RAM, R-A-M, if you've got at least 16 gigabytes of memory or RAM, then that's sufficient enough for an architecture student. Um, it runs the right programs and stuff. My PC has 32 gigabytes of RAM. I recently upgraded it. And that's usually the great thing about it is that you can just upgrade it over time. So if you start with 16 gigs, um, it usually does the job um, for the first couple of years of architecture school anyway, because you're not doing anything too heavy. And then secondly, you've got your CPU. And this is what does um, or does most of the heavy lifting for rendering and um, running certain programs and software. Um, so having a good CPU is definitely important. And the way that you can find what a good CPU is, what you can do is you can type into Google search or whatever search engine you've got, um, a CPU benchmark. And what this does is that these benchmark websites, they are sites with that archive and collect all this different data from different CPUs and um, it, grades them against each other. And so my kind of general rule of thumb here is if you've got an i7 
um, or a high-end i5 CPU, it's going to be sufficient enough for an architecture student. So 16 gigs of RAM with an i7 CPU, you're pretty well, pretty well good to go. However, I also want to talk about your GPU, your graphics card, your graphics card processor unit, I think it stands for. Um, but what this does is that the, what you've got on screen and all your um, 3D models and stuff, it also helps that run a lot quicker while you're working. So your CPU kind of helps once you finish your working on your 3D models, when you're rendering it, it helps that go faster and your, your rendering goes faster. However, um, your GPU helps um, your workflow and your workspaces run a lot faster. So if you've got a higher graded CPU, uh, GPU, then it's going to be a lot faster when working. And so you can test these different GPUs against each other using this benchmark tool as well. And so there's one more component um, that's got to do with your hardware that's going to affect the way your laptop or PC handles. And that is the storage drive that is on your laptop or PC. There are two different types of storage drives. They are called a hard drive or a solid state drive. And so these are usually abbreviated by HDD or SDD. You don't want a hard drive, you want an SSD because um, this will increase your load times and the way that you're going through your files on your computer, it makes everything a lot quicker. Hard drives are pretty well outdated for 2020. Um, so if you have an SSD, it's gonna run a lot more smoother. From there, you can choose which SSD you want, um, depending on how much storage you need. General rule of thumb here again is like, um, you don't wanna have to uh, get a 320 gigabyte SST, SSD and then find that six months later, you've used all of that up and then you have to migrate to a larger SSD. So general rule of thumb, I would say, is get a one terabyte SSD as your storage unit. So then that kind of covers it all. When you're purchasing a laptop or PC, these specifications are given to you. And so you can just test them by looking up um, either the Passmark Benchmark site. I think that's called Passmark, maybe. I'll put the link in the description to check these benchmark sites. So all you have to do is just test the specifications and the different hardwares and grade them against each other and decide which one suits you because everyone has different needs. If you're in first year, the computer you're using um, doesn't have to be as uh, high end as something you're using in the profession of architecture. So the general rule of thumb here guys is get 16 gigabytes of RAM at least, the more the better. Also to have an i7 CPU or higher is fantastic um, and will do everything that you need. However, just know that just because it's i7 doesn't mean that it's better than all the i5s. Some of the i5s and the higher end i5s are better than i7s. Um, so just look them up on your um, benchmark website. Also the GPU, if you've got a higher end GPU, um, it's probably not as important as the other three components. However, having a good GPU will also um, help run everything a lot smoother and quicker. And then finally, have uh, make sure that you have an SSD instead of a HDD. So have a solid state drive storage unit, um, at least one terabyte, um, or at least maybe 750 gigabytes if you wanna get away with a little bit less storage. Um, they're not that expensive, so definitely invest in that. However, side note, what I do with my PC is that I've got only a 320 gigabyte SSD, so it's not huge, but I run all of my computer programs on there, and then all of the files I have, I store on a HDD because they don't need to run as quickly. Only the files on my computer need to run quickly. So I use an external HDD, an external hard drive that it has um, over, I think it's like two, gig, uh, two terabytes of storage. And I use that to store all of my, my videos and my, um, all of my student work and everything that takes up all the space. And so a one terabyte SSD is a lot more expensive than a one terabyte hard drive. And so that's the reasons for doing that. One other side note as well, when buying a laptop or a PC, you don't have to buy them brand new. And that's what I realized. The laptop I just bought, that Asus Spin, um, I bought it second hand from someone off a of Facebook marketplace. Um, otherwise you can go on Gumtree or Craigslist or wherever you are, you can find a different site to buy second hand items. And this laptop I bought for less than half the price of um, what it was in stores. And it was only a couple of months old. Um, the user had used it, I think maybe three or four times and said it was too small for them. So I bought it for less than half of the price and saved myself a couple of hundred bucks. Definitely try buying secondhand as well. My PC cost me a thousand dollars when if you put all the parts together and you buy it brand new, it's over two and a half grand. So what I'm trying to say is that you don't have to spend all of your money on a brand new high-end item um, computer or laptop. What you can do is um, 
spend your money on something secondhand that's kind of mid to high tier and it's going to save you a lot more money. So thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I really appreciate your support. If you did enjoy the video, please, please, please leave me a thumbs up on the video. It really does help. And please as well leave a comment um, explaining any comments or thoughts you have about buying laptops. Um, what kind of laptop do you use? I'd also like to know that as well. Um, do you use a laptop or PC as well? That's kind of a debate that um, I'd like to know more about. And finally, for those of you that are loyal enough and supportive enough that stayed for the rest of this video, please make sure you're subscribed um, and you hit that bell, um, that little bell icon next to the subscribe button because this notifies you when I post a new video and that um, really helps make sure you don't miss out on the great content that I put out every single um, day or every couple of days that I do. And saying that, if you want to check out some of those other great videos, um, you can use the button to the side here. Um, there's a couple of videos, I think there's one and then there's two um, and then there's a subscribe button there. If I've got that reversed, I've just stuffed up. So just click the buttons wherever they are on the screen. Thank you guys so much and I'll see you in the next video.